In this video, we're gonna tackle a question that deals with the valuation of a company. Specifically, you're being asked, investors are paying the most for the earnings of which company? There are two nuggets of knowledge that will help you understand this concept and get the right answer. Nugget number one, understand what stock consolidations and stock splits are all about. Now, this nugget really doesn't have much to do with this specific question, and it may not even be in the course you are studying, but trust me, this background knowledge will help you understand this concept much better. For obvious reasons, a publicly traded company may not want its share price to fall too low. For example, if I told you that a company's share price was only 10 cents and nothing else about the company at all, based on the price alone, you're probably going to be skeptical and think, that doesn't sound like a very good company at all. On the other hand, since investors like to buy shares in quantities of 100, generally known as a standard trading unit, a publicly traded company may not want its share price to be too high either. For example, if this share price rises to $2,500 per share, it would cost $250,000 for a mere 100 shares. At this price level, you would need a very large portfolio to own enough different companies to remain diversified. Here's the interesting part. A publicly traded company can artificially decrease or increase its share price simply by doing a stock split or a stock consolidation. For example, if a single share has a market value of $10, the company could lower the price to $5 by doing a two for one stock split. If you split a $10 share into two, it will become two shares worth $5 each. On the other hand, by doing a two to one stock consolidation, also called a reverse stock split, it would increase the price of each share to $20. Make sense so far? The learning point is this. If we know that a company can increase or decrease its share price in this manner, it would be foolish to look at the share price alone when assessing value. For greater clarity, if the company does a two to one stock consolidation and the stock price doubles, it doesn't mean that all of a sudden it's a better company. This brings me to nugget number two, which applies directly to this question. Understand the price earnings ratio, also called the price earnings multiple, and what it tells you. It is the share price in relationship to the company's earnings per share. With all this in mind, let's circle back to the question I referenced at the top of the video. We're going to get rid of a column and add a new one because all we need is the price, the earnings per share, and a column to calculate and insert the price earnings ratio. To determine the price earnings ratio, we simply divide the share price by its earnings per share. ACO has a price of $10 and earnings per share of $1 for a price earnings ratio of 10. BCO has a price of $15 and earnings per share of 75 cents for a price earnings ratio of 20. CCO has a price of $8 and earnings per share of 10 cents for a price earnings ratio of 80. DCO has a price of $10 and earnings per share of $1.25 for a price earnings ratio of eight. So the question, investors are paying the most for the earnings of which company, we can now see it is CCO, which has a high price earnings ratio of 80. Let's select that answer and we're correct. Now, all else being equal, an investor would prefer to buy the company with the lowest price in relationship to earnings. That being said, it rarely is all else being equal. And sometimes it is justified to pay a higher price earnings multiple, particularly if the company's prospects are that much better. But that's a whole other lesson. The key to this question is to know that you shouldn't focus on share price, but rather the price in relationship to the company's earnings.